Beauty YouTuber Nikita Dragon got exposed by her ex-boyfriend, Michael Yerger. Before I get into the tea, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Nikita Dragon, Michael Yerger, or anyone else involved in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give some insight on the situation. Now let's get into the tea. On July 23rd, Nikita Dragon addressed her relationship with model Michael Yerger in a video titled, I Got My Heart Broken. Nikita explained her initial interactions with Michael were business related. And like, I was like, okay, you know what, let's film this video, let's take photos, and also too, you know, since you are a model, like why don't you just be in my campaigns? She filmed two YouTube videos with Michael, one in October 2018 called I Hired a Boyfriend for a Day, and one in March 2019 called Boyfriend Q&A in a Lambo. She featured Michael in her campaign for Dragon Beauty and took multiple photos with him. Nikita said she wanted more than a business relationship. I think for me when everything started to take a turn was when I started to catch feelings. So, Nikita said she confessed her feelings to Michael. This was like the first time I seriously was like looking at a man and saying that I want you and that I like you and I have feelings for you and I understand that I'm trans and I understand that people are saying such disgusting things on the daily on your page or you know, you probably have to deal with your family. Michael also allegedly confessed his feelings to her. And he looked at me and said, Nikita, I don't care what the world is gonna say, I don't care what people are gonna say, I like you and I want something more from this. Nikita said it was a lot for Michael to take in. His kind of side when things were starting to like be revealed of like my true feelings was more of like a look like I, I actually, I'm thinking I'm kind of liking you, but like I, you know, the mental of like everything else that's going on. Like I, I accept you kind of for who you are, but at the same time, like it is a lot. And I, I accepted that. She talked about the rough patches in their relationship, which involves social media. Nikita was upset that Michael never posted any photos of her on Instagram. She said it would make her feel secure in their relationship. For me, the photo on his page was the validation of knowing that this was someone who wanted to be with me. Michael explained why he didn't post pictures of her. Of course, the excuse was like, oh, babe, you know what? Like, I just, you know, it's my modeling portfolio. However, Nikita pointed out Michael's hypocrisy. She said they got into a big fight over her campaign video that he featured in. He basically sent me a text that was like, damn, you didn't tag me? How cruel. After that fight, Nikita wanted to make amends, so she offered Michael and his friends VIP wristbands to Coachella. He didn't even ask me or anything, but I got him a, a wristband, a VIP wristband to Coachella, his roommate a wristband, and his roommate's girlfriend a wristband. Nikita said she enjoyed the first night and showed photos of her and Michael together. He gave her piggyback rides, they took a photo together, and he kissed her on the cheek. But Coachella didn't end well for the two. Nikita said they got in an argument when she saw Michael in an Instagram photo with another girl. I saw that he was with that girl and I knew exactly who she was. And so I went to her page and I saw that she posted a photo with him. And literally, of course, her captains break up with your girlfriend because I'm bored. Like, of course. Like, what more of an answers could I want? Nikita confronted Michael about the girl in the photo, and he allegedly said, and he's like, oh yeah, I just ran into her like with an eye roll, and I was like, like, don't lie on me, you know? Like, don't lie on me. This girl is currently Michael's real girlfriend. In May, she posted what appears to be a romantic getaway photo with Michael captioned 2019 versus 2011. Not much has changed. It's unclear whether he was dating her while working with Nikita or if they got together after the Coachella incident. So, back to Nikita's video. She ended her relationship with Michael that weekend. I was like, look, like I thought we were on the same page about this. He told me he was struggling relationally right now and that he just doesn't know what if, I, if he could be what I wanted long term. And I just felt like that's all I needed to know. I can't be mad at someone for like not being able to fully love me for me. Michael shared his side of the story on Instagram. He said he was tempted by the fame. There kept being temptations thrown in my face, like exposure, fame, and money, and I received all three, but not by any wrongdoing or ill will, 
In fact, quite the opposite. He confirmed their relationship started out on business terms. She knew what she was offering me, and she knew what she was wanting from me. She approached me at the bar, she asked me to be in her YouTube videos, she booked jobs through my modeling agency, and she would ask for me to take photos with her. Michael explained the only time he wanted exposure was when he featured in Nikita's Dragon Beauty campaign. While I found it quite generous of her to be giving me exposure and recognition, I never asked for it from her, except for that fight she mentioned, which was the most relaxed conversation by the way. He implied that Nikita lured him in with the project she was offering him. She kept booking me. Her manager is my agent's partner, and she kept me consistently in her life for project after project, with bigger incentives to come back each time. Michael acknowledged Nikita helped him grow as a model. Let it be known that my life was changing for the better at this point. A few tags from her and she was opening up doors for me left and right. He said he was uncomfortable at times being Nikita's fake boyfriend. I don't know Hollywood well at this point, and I assume that this is a normal thing to do to find successes in the industry, and I thought nothing of it, until I started getting uncomfortable when the videos required more touching or kissing or dancing. I slowly let myself do more and more and it branded me to be a person I didn't feel like I was. The worst was when we did a quote boyfriend Q&A where her fans could ask questions about us. Half the questions were either too sexual or too false for me to read. There were cameras filming and so much pressure to answer those questions, as if I and her were really an item. Michael denied telling Nikita he had feelings for her. When we had that conversation on her balcony, I asked her what she wanted because I honestly wanted to know. So she said, you. And I told her that I liked her as a person and had an insane amount of respect for her courage and utter boldness to accomplish all that she has. I didn't mean, I like you and am interested in you. I said this would be a new thing for me, and I'm not sure how to feel about it, and that I would take it one day at a time. Michael said Nikita lured him out to social events. She kept increasing the pressure by luring me in with the lifestyle and celebrity circle, and weakened my sense of judgment. As our relationship became more social going to events and parties, there naturally came to be more drinking and partying. He explained he was uncomfortable with how Nikita and her team organized their meetings. She would intentionally invite me to things after we would wrap our YouTube videos and projects for her company campaign. Or, better yet, we would start the day at her apartment by having call time there, so my car would be at her building, and when we got home, I would be stuck there. Her team would always rush out of her apartment quickly after arriving so that we would be left alone. Michael said he caught himself lying to Nikita because of how uncomfortable he felt. I would make excuses as to what modeling jobs I had the next day when sometimes I had none. It was such constant, strategic social gameplay that I hadn't even seen on Survivor. He said he couldn't back out because of Nikita's fans. I felt like I couldn't back away because I would get attacked by an army of her followers who would accuse me for being fake. Michael said he was conflicted because he saw being with Nikita as a way to further his career, but it would clash with his values. I was torn because I got thrown into an industry of likes and followers after being on reality TV, and I saw it as an opportunity to change things in my life. But I never chased after it because I'm not a user, I'm not a faker, and I'm definitely not a cheater. He addressed the Coachella situation. During festival season, I expressed to her that my tickets to Coachella fell through because my brand deal with another group fell through last minute. I told her I wouldn't be seeing her there, and she kindly offered to get more tickets from Sugar Bear Hair for us. I told her that wasn't necessary, but if it was no big deal, then we'd all really appreciate it. Michael said their experience at Coachella was another business interaction. I introduced her to my friends, and we of course were obligated to spend time together with her, and we really wanted to because she's a lot of fun, but it wasn't romantic. It was, again, another transaction. He said he gave her the Coachella boyfriend fantasy. She so badly wanted the boyfriend Coachella fantasy as she had never been to Coachella, so, like I had always done, I gave her the photos and the piggybacks and tried my best to show her a good time since I had done the festival before. Michael addressed the girl in the photo, but let's make it known that I did not run into that other person. I was good and well meeting her there as planned to spend the next day together. And I'll go ahead and add that I've known this person for a decade and always had an extremely strong connection with her. She's not some random to me, and she definitely did not think that this other person and I were a real item. He said the girl's caption, which read, break up with your girlfriend cause I'm bored, didn't have any ill feelings. She would have never once used the words she did to disrespect anyone in that form or fashion. Michael said he wasn't using Nikita or playing with her feelings. 
I am far from a perfect person, but I don't play people like that. He said he developed a relationship with the girl in the photo. As mine and this other girl's relationship built, I realized it wasn't healthy for me or our relationship to continue on with an online facade. That is when I had to be brutally honest with her how I felt about the situation. Michael explained the reason he didn't post about Nikita. When she was upset with me for not posting her, it was not because I was embarrassed of her. It was because I did not want to be inauthentic on something that was a representation of me. Posting with Paris is not representing a relationship. It's representing a role played in a music video, which is much different than a boyfriend Q&A or a dance partner at a party. He also spoke about the reason he posted about his new girlfriend. And posting this other girl was not being spiteful or rude. It's sharing someone who has been an insanely large part of my personal life and now my romantic life. Michael said he was honest with Nikita. I was honest with her on how I was feeling and she didn't like it one bit because she has been working so hard to form something real and I regret falling into that trap and letting it happen to me because I agree that I hurt her just as she hurt me. Michael said he didn't have bad intentions when he continued to say yes to Nikita's offers. I was forced to give her a fantasy in person and on camera as I continued to say yes to the opportunities. The pain I inflicted was never intentional, but rather innocent and haphazard. He said he just wanted to live an honest life. Regardless of how this whole mess occurred, I don't want anyone to be heartbroken and feel the things she has felt or claimed to have felt. I just wanted to quit feeling like I was living a lie and being forced into a lifestyle and scene that I didn't know if I ever understood or even wanted. Michael suggested Nikita's timing was calculated since she uploaded the video on his birthday. I find this occurrence today to happen out of jealousy and spite, and I don't find the timing to be a coincidence. I would like to think that this is all just a misunderstanding and miscommunication on both our ends, but at the caliber of her fame, one must assume that she might have other motives, pity or empathy. As Nikita and Michael became a hot topic, fans dug up old receipts. Back in May, Michael posted a photo with his girlfriend. Someone left a comment which said, Yes, finally a hot sweet girl. No more chicks with please. What the f are you thinking? I'm all about this. Bye bye Nikita Dragon. Michael's girlfriend liked the comment. Here for the tea shared video proof that the like was real. The girlfriend unliked the comment after people brought it to light. A lot of people sympathized with Nikita. Welcome to the world of dating men, Nikita. It's an ongoing nightmare. Babe, something you'll sadly learn is that there's no such thing as mixed messages. If a man is truly into you, you won't have to feel confused or insecure. You deserve someone who is truly into you for you. Honey, if he's willing to cheat for you, then he's willing to cheat on you. Remember that one as well. Some people gave Nikita advice. Girl, you hired him. Don't ever do this to yourself again. This is to prove that money can't buy happiness. Nikita just needs to realize that you can't force a fantasy, period. I just found out he turned 21 this July. Nikita, baby girl, you need a man, not some boy that needs five more years to mature and get his shit straight. However, there were also a lot of people against Nikita. What did you think was going to happen when you paid someone to hang out with you? Face palm. Are we really supposed to believe Michael Yerger fell in love with Nikita Dragon after she hired him to be her pretend Instagram boyfriend? Please, OMG, YouTubers blow everything out of proportion. Some people felt the truth was in the middle. Both of their sides sound a little extreme, unrealistic, and young, lol. Did he probably lead her on a little bit? Yes, but maybe next time, don't start your relationship off as business transactions and find someone with genuine, not manufactured feelings for you. Others were critical of Michael's side of the story. I read Michael's response. The line, I'm just a friendly and nice person, really doesn't sit well with me. Nice people normally don't have to say that they are a nice person. It normally shows through their actions. While he's not bashing Nikita directly, something about I'm an extremely accepting and loving person and falling into that trap of Nikita's lifestyle and perks and I was forced to give her a fantasy totally rubs me the wrong way. He's not attacking Nikita directly, but he most certainly is playing out the victim role despite the fact that in reality, it was his greed and ambition that drove him to play the transactional role haphazardly and with little consideration of how Nikita felt. I'm sure there were many opportunities throughout it all to make it clear. The comments didn't end there. Nikita's fans were causing a scene on Michael's birthday post. Michael posted a birthday photo with his girlfriend the day Nikita uploaded the heartbreak video. Michael's post was flooded with comments related to Nikita. 
You got that blue check mark because of Nikita, never forget. Spending Nikita's pocket money? Cloud Chaser. I thought you couldn't post pics with your GFs because IG is your modeling portfolio. Only thing you're modeling is cheating, downgrading, and hypocrisy. Many people also took the chance to hate on his girlfriend. She's so basic, LMAO. And you posted her, but not Nikita? Make it make sense. You lost Nikita for that. Dude, you downgraded big time. A couple people defended Michael's girlfriend. That's not his girlfriend's fault, guys. Just leave that girl out of this. How can you all hate when he has pictures with this girl since 2016, and it's clear Nikita hired him to make us believe they were dating and he did a good job because all of us believed it. And now we look like fools defending Nikita. It's not his fault she catch feeling. Another person commented on Nikita's body. So glad he doesn't hang out with silicone Barbies anymore. After the overwhelming amount of backlash, Michael decided to address the situation again. Michael posted another lengthy Instagram story saying he wanted to provide clarification. He addressed the balcony situation again. I asked her what she wanted. She expressed feelings for me. I told her that I didn't know what any of this was or what it meant to me. I did not lead her on or lull her into any sense of false love. I was honest with her in my feelings of hesitation. Michael said Nikita wasn't clear when she confessed her feelings. I asked her point blank if she wanted a fake image of having a real boyfriend to the public. She definitely did not state that 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 was all she was wanting. He said Nikita didn't give him a choice to decide on the relationship. She didn't ever give me an ultimatum where I had to decide if I was in or out. She left the situation open knowing where I was at with everything. She continued to book me for things. Michael said getting tagged in Nikita's campaign video was part of their contract. It was under contract how much I was to be paid for this and that there was a guaranteed tag as this city is now largely reliant on exposure-based currency. He explained how Nikita's team handled the contract situation. I called my agent to ask if he could enforce the contract upon her management. Her team replied with, Will Michael post the video to help with exposure and launch of her new brand? I wondered what she could possibly need from my platform when she has the world in her pocket. Michael said Nikita belittled him. She always belittled me and my status compared to hers and made me feel insignificant, like I needed her to become someone who mattered. My successes and life up to that point were a joke to her. Michael implied Nikita used the campaign video as an opportunity to further their relationship. It wasn't about the exposure for her video, but rather a stamp on our relationship that we were real. We kissed in the video, and she knew that it would give her following the validation that everything they had been seeing was authentic. He said he wanted control of his page and image, so he denied posting Nikita's campaign video on his Instagram page. Michael said he felt gross with how internet fame works. I've learned to realize how utterly fake and phony it all is, and quite frankly, I just feel gross with all of this. Seeing how I experience this whole story and how she's telling it to be just gives me no hope that anything online is fully sincere anymore. He said some kind things about Nikita. She's an immensely strong person who inspired me and taught me things. Michael spoke about how open-minded he is. I feel like the reason she began to fall for me is because I was one out of many who didn't give a f about what people thought. I've always been more open-minded and accepting to others that are different from me. He also talked about someone with a beautiful heart. It's unclear whether he's talking about Nikita or his girlfriend. The worst part about all this is that someone like this other person who is so pure with a beautiful heart is having to suffer from a falsehood caused by bad timing and misinformation. Michael ended his story by saying they were on two different journeys. In other words, they weren't on the same page with how their relationship was developing. And that seems to be the end of the drama for now. So, what's the big issue? The forced relationship between Nikita and Michael. We can all agree that their relationship started out on business terms, but that doesn't mean a connection can't develop. We've seen many celebrities date and get married after acting in a movie together. It's something that can happen. However, we don't know if the connection was mutual with Nikita and Michael. There's obviously a lot missing from both sides of the story because we get two completely different answers from them. During their balcony conversation, Michael said, I liked her as a person. I didn't mean, I like you and I'm interested in you. However, Nikita claimed Michael said something different. And he looked at me and said, Nikita, I don't care what the world is gonna say, I don't care what people are gonna say, I like you and I want something more from this. Nikita also claimed they got physical, which Michael did not address. And you know, everything finally came to a head when we 
got physical. It's unclear whether Nikita was referring to a personal experience or if she was referring to the paid physical contact they had in her campaign videos. Regardless, the relationship started out forced and there seems to be some sort of miscommunication that led Nikita to believe there were mutual feelings. Whether Michael was clear with his feelings or not, it still raises the question of knowing when you're going too far in a relationship. In a Friends with Benefits article, Heidi Reeder, an associate professor of communication, says, if you sense that sexual activity would really mean something to your friend, but not to you, and you go there anyway, friendship quality can take a hit. Suddenly, there will be uncertainty about where the friendship relationship is headed. If you can't accurately read your friend's intentions and you want to keep the friendship strong, it's best to directly talk with your pal about what sexual activity between the two of you would mean. In other words, if you sense that your actions, even on business terms, would mean something to your friend, but not to you, then don't go forward with it. In this case, it would be the Coachella boyfriend fantasy that Michael gave to Nikita. At that point, he already knew Nikita had feelings for him, and even if it was a business deal, it would have been a smarter move to decline the offer. No amount of fame and exposure should be accepted if you know it will hurt the other person. Overall, both parties were in the wrong. Nikita should have stopped booking Michael if she wanted to pursue a serious relationship with him outside of business. And Michael should have declined business offers from Nikita after she confessed her feelings to him. It may be a big chance at exposure and fame, but you're playing with feelings at that point, and that's really risky. Like the saying goes, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Things may have gone better if Michael politely declined and found modeling jobs elsewhere. Also, no matter how shady you think Michael's girlfriend might be, you shouldn't write hate comments to her. What do you think of this story? Should Nikita have made her video? Let me know in the comments below.